When digital painting first started, there really wasn't much to worry about. You had Microsoft Paint at first, and with its limited tools, didn't really offer much to artists. Craig Mullen said once in an interview that even Photoshop at its inception was not considered a potential software for illustrators. Of course, whoever said that was obviously wrong about that. <laughs> and now Photoshop is just one of many different programs that allow you to paint digitally. And in each program, there are tons of different options for you to choose to create the work of art that you wanna create. Right now I'm trying to learn Clip Studio Paint because I've heard of how many amazing tools it has to offer, but it does feel a little baffling and overwhelming. It's exciting and I really love it, but it does feel like there's a steep learning curve. And if you're starting digital painting for the first time or you're just starting to take it seriously, it can help to have a few tips in your tool belt to help to make that experience smooth and enjoyable. I'm not sure where I learned to do this, but it is one of my favorite techniques by far, and it allows you to work within clean selections. On a clean layer, create a shape with any brush, then create a new layer and alt-click in between those two layers that you just created. If you did it correctly, you should see a little arrow hanging down at the layer below. Now that layer with the little arrow will only allow you to create marks where you created the shape on the previous layer where it's pointing to. It basically masks the shape on the previous layer, so you can't paint outside the lines of that shape. This has so many benefits, it honestly feels like a little bit of cheating. Think about it. You can create large, sweeping brush strokes, but it's always going to still stay in that shape that you created. You can add shadow and rim light to the exact edge of where you're painting without worrying about straying marks or lines. And usually what I use it a lot for is making sure that I'm painting on the character instead of the background. It's an extremely clean way to paint and it lets you get away with a lot that you could never get away with traditionally. Most people will tell you that gear doesn't matter, and while that can be very true, there are some things that you need to consider. There's a much larger selection of tablets and companies that produce them today than there ever have been, but not all of them are created equal. And if you opt for a cheaper tablet, you may get so used to it that when you finally save up enough to buy the better one, it's gonna feel really uncomfortable. I've been drawing on Wacom tablets my entire life, and I've tried other tablets, but they always feel extremely uncomfortable in comparison. Well, unless you wanna spend a lot of time getting used to a new type of tablet, you might wanna opt for the tablet of your dreams uh, versus a cheaper alternative. My first tablet was a medium-sized Wacom Intuos 4, and I bought that because I was told that Wacom was the best company out there, and I still believe that today. This video is sponsored by them, but I was the one that reached out to them because I know the people and the product that I want to support. Nothing else has ever felt comfortable in my hands and I do believe that they have the best quality in terms of tablets in the market today. My current tablet is an Intuos Pro and I honestly couldn't imagine painting with anything else. I get that some people have a limited budget and digital painting can be done on any tablet, but it is worth considering investing in a higher priced product so you have a better return on your investment. As an artist you're going to be a lifelong customer and user of a digital tablet if you decide to go on that route. It's going to make a difference in the long run and it's something that is at least worth considering. I'm not going to lie that seeing people paint on their phones is pretty cool but it can limit you and your growth in terms of the array of skills that you need to learn. Don't get me wrong, you can learn on your phone and I'm sure you would get better and those skills would even translate onto a different device should you ever upgrade or change to a tablet. But you are gonna have a problem the moment you start to change the size of what you're drawing. Drawing in a variety of sizes lets you become accustomed to proportions. If all you're drawing is one size fits all on your phone, you're gonna run into issues when you have to draw in any other size because you've never done it before. If you have to get a phone-like screen, try getting something like an iPad so you can use your whole arm as you're drawing. Edge control is a big thing for painters. It communicates form, focus, and guides your viewer's eye across the composition. How well you can control your edges will determine how much of an impact that your composition has on your viewer. Beginners tend to overlook the fact that there are tools dedicated to blending and making those edges look right. 
I know when I first started, I would use the soft brush to manually control all of my edges, but there is a better way. In Photoshop, you have the mixer brush, and in Clip Studio, you have the blending tool. I've personally never really liked the mixer brush that much. I have tried to use it, but it feels very artificial, like it's pulling paint on top of one another. I do know artists that use it successfully, but I usually end up using brushes to manually do what I need to do. It takes more effort and practice, but you do have to decide what's best for you. Clip Studio, on the other hand, is a whole different ball game. The blending tool is ridiculously powerful. The colors feel like they actually mix in a fluid manner. Even though I know I'm throwing around virtual paint, it feels organic and like it's doing what it should. Controlling your edges is kind of one of the fundamentals of painting, so if you can make your life easier doing it and Clip Studio gives you the tools to do it, then you should be jumping for joy. <laughs> I know I am. Pretty sure Clip Studio has a free trial, so maybe you should definitely download it and check it out. See if you want to learn it instead of Photoshop. It honestly might be worth it just for that one tool. The brush tool is really all that you need to start digital painting. These programs can be very overwhelming because there are so many options, so many things that you can do with it. When you start, just focus on the fact that you just need one tool, the brush tool. As you get comfortable using the brush, you can start to adjust the settings to see how different settings on the brush affect how you use it. You can start using the eraser tool to erase away paint. You can use the levels to adjust your values hue and saturation to change your colors. Add a layer of complexity to your process every time that you get comfortable with something you've done. So that way you keep on learning the program and you don't feel overwhelmed by the various tools that it provides. The first time I noticed a problem with my monitor was when I was working on this painting uh, those winter themed Calvin and Hobbes. I had a Mac laptop and my desktop monitor and I noticed a discrepancy between the values and colors. On my monitor all of the values were super dark and on my laptop it was a lot more vibrant and bright. Nits are a unit of measurement that describe how bright a display can get. If your monitor can only reach 300 nits that's kind of a low value and you're working within a limited range of values and colors. In the day that I finished that illustration, I realized I was working within a squished value range. Now you can imagine how this might screw you up while you're learning, and it's very important for you to observe and record what you're seeing accurately. And it just ruins your final illustration. But thankfully, as a digital painting, you know, a couple adjustments to the levels and colors, it was back to normal, or at least what I thought was the normal when I first looked at it. Take care that when you choose a monitor or a laptop that it has a significant number of nits, preferably over 500, <laughs> to make sure you're seeing the full range of values and colors properly. Kings are overrated, and composition is queen in the world of art. It should be the first thing you think about when making an illustration. Composition is what draws you into the image and makes it compelling enough for you to stick around. There's an emotional connection that happens because of the way that you designed it. Simple change in eye level can communicate vastly different moods and emotional responses. When something as small as that can change the impact of a painting so profoundly, you need to understand how to design it for your benefit. Most artists these days tend to make a lot of pinup art that has little to no impact on the viewer. If all you want to do is draw pretty faces that are straight on and show little to no emotion, that's fine. But if you want to make an impact on the viewer and even yourself, you have to consider the composition. There seems to be a wild misconception that you have to be drawing traditionally before you ever start digital art. If you want to be a digital artist and do digital painting, then just do it. You don't have to wait till you cross some imaginary threshold of traditional art before you get to start digital. However, one thing you might want to do is practice digital art as if you were doing it traditionally. What I mean by that is not using the tools so favorably that it ends up hurting you in the long run. If all you're used to is fixing your drawings with the lasso tool and the liquify tool, you're never going to get that muscle memory to actually draw things correctly. So when you're learning, practice doing things without those tools. And when you're making a finished illustration, you can use those tools to your benefit. 
The library of digital tools is massive. Photoshop and Clip Studio alone have tons of features that are different from each other. And there tends to be more than one way to do something or at least something similar. Not only that, but we all approach problems differently. I mean, we all have the fundamentals, but we don't all draw the head the same way. Some people like to draw circles so they can outline where the eyes are gonna go. Some people like to add the little cross. And some people are crazy and like to paint the eye and move outwards from the figure. <laughs> you don't need to look for the perfect way to paint something, you just need to do it. And if you want to learn a different process, then try it out as you get comfortable with the first one. There are many different flavors on how to create something and you don't have to limit yourself to just one. Enjoy your creative process. If you can make your illustration look good from a thumbnail, you're halfway to a masterpiece. In the time you spend creating an illustration, the details are where you're gonna spend a lot of your time. It's just tedious, it takes a lot of time to do it. If the thumbnail looks bad, no amount of detail is going to save it. So slow down in the beginning so that you have a strong foundation to start from. There are times where I'm browsing art and the thumbnail really draws me in. And then I look at the final piece and it's not as engaging. <laughs> this isn't a failure of the artist. They have half of the equation and in time, probably very soon, they are close to getting that full thing to work for them. Not that that's easy, but you will figure it out. Final tip that I love to take advantage of for digital painting is non-destructive art. Now, what do I mean by that? If you work traditionally and you wanted to create a character design, you have to work one, finish it, and then start another one. You can't stop midway in between, save the base figure, and make a lot of different iterations. You always have to keep redrawing that same figure, trying out different costumes and designs. In digital, you can work in a non-destructive way, copy the base layer of the figure, paste it 20 times, and try out lots of different designs. You can alter the colors, you could even change the pose slightly on each one, but the original is never destroyed. Getting my hands on a Wacom tablet for the first time was like a dream. I was too scared to do any real artwork of my own, so I colored pages of my favorite manga until I got used to the tablet enough and got enough courage to create works of my own. I hope this video gives you the courage to dive right in, skip the coloring manga pages step, and just create works of your own. Digital painting is a thrilling experience, and these are just gonna be the building blocks to your rise as a professional artist. That is all I have for you for today's episode. Thank you to Wacom for sponsoring this video. Have a happy and healthy creative process. And if you're just starting digital painting, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.